right, welcome to one more round. Excited today. Uh, I have a good friend of mine, Laura Newbro, who is here. Uh, just a quick bio on her. Laura is the founder of LNHR Consulting, human resources and payroll solution for businesses of all sizes here in the Valley. With her 20 plus years of experience, she has helped businesses develop and implement custom, efficient, and effective HR programs from scratch. Her passion is culture and inclusion with a focus of diversity and overall development program to enrich the employee experience. As a wife and mother of two, you can find her all across the valley between sports, family, and fun. Yeah, that's an understatement. All over the valley oh, yeah. seems to be the thing lately. So thanks for having me on today. Yeah, I really welcome. appreciate it. So it's fun to talk HR talk when, you know, share some stories yeah. and talk about how it can enhance your business. Absolutely. Well, and, and long time no see. We I know, right? Last night. Uh, <laughs> it's been 12 hours. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The Arizona Entrepreneurs. That was a lot of fun. That was an amazing event. I met so many great people there. I couldn't oh, yeah. believe, you know, coming out of COVID and now finally people are getting back together. People are feeling safe. It was great to shake hands and meet so many people. There was 270 people there, they said. Yeah, and they were only expecting 200. Wow. So. Yeah, and that was really cool. Old Town Scottsdale, yep. nice location. So Yeah, So, and that's the like the perfect place for you because like every small business as they're growing, I mean, HR is a big deal. It is. I remember um, there's a Jack Welch book, and it's called Winning, mm-hmm. and he spends an entire <clears throat> chapter talking about how HR is the most important thing for a business. Yes. So when we were talking, I'm like, man, you got to come on. Let's let's talk. So <laughs> how did you get started into HR? Oh, my goodness. So um, I started my career, actually, um, when I moved out here to Arizona. You know, prior to that, I was working several jobs in Chicago. Just, you know, I was young in college and whatnot. So mm. I moved out here, and I, I landed with an engineering firm. Um, I was, I was with that firm for almost 10 years, and I was in their project controller section. So I worked on projects that were larger than $5 million. I traveled across the United States. I thought it was pretty dang cool as a young 20-some, yeah. going to Miami, going to New Jersey. Um, so I worked on a project here in Phoenix, the Phoenix SkyTrain project, mm-hmm. as they were going through design and then the early stages of construction. Um, I had gotten to a point, and, and I loved that company, and my mentor there was just absolutely amazing. She and I still get together. Um, but I had gotten to a point where I had little kids. I live in Gilbert, mm-hmm. and I was driving all the way to 24th Street in Camelback. So every day. Every day. And my son was a little little guy, and I would get home, I would feed him, and he would go to bed. So I needed, I just needed more flexibility. So I kind of started my job search and um, that was when I met uh, my former CEO and very good friend of mine. Um, I met him. He was very, very much an entrepreneur. So he was working with this company. He was looking to start something up here in the Valley, um, kind of on the uh, virtual design and construction side of things, Mm -hmm. right? So super exciting technology, this, that, and the other. Well, when I met with him, we had, he was offering flexibility. So I was able to, you know, kind of be home when I needed to be home. I could work from home. I could work in the office. And um, that was kind of what drew me to that organization. Plus it was just an open door. Mm -hmm. You know, you're starting something. I was one of the original eight employees. We started at a park. We had no computers. We didn't have an office. We didn't have anything. So he, he really is the one who kind of nudged me into HR. Mm -hmm. I make the joke all the time, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be an HR consultant and I would have told you, you were absolutely crazy. Human resources, no thanks. (laughs) But it turns out that um, I really enjoy, so I really enjoy building things. I love building process and procedures. I love building, um, you know, organizational charts, structure, ways for people to grow within an organization, really building culture, defining what culture is. Um, so we were able to take that company from eight people to 130 when, wow. when I left. And of course I'm still good friends with them. I was just yeah. over there yesterday saying hi to everybody. So, um, it, it was really exciting because it was really building something from scratch, mm-hmm. putting my mark on it. Right. So sort of as the company evolved, I was there 10 years. Um, as the company started getting bigger there, you really see a need for HR as companies start to expand. When you start out and you have, you know, you've hired your brother, you've hired your best friend, mm-hmm. you've got a couple of people working here. Do you really need an organizational chart? That seems kind of silly, right? Yeah. You can scratch it out on some paper. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. okay, you report to me, you'll be here. I know you're going to be here. We don't even really need to talk about right. stuff like that. However, yeah you now hire in a new person. Well, a new person's just come from a different company, right? So they have expectations. So if you don't have you know, these expectations lined out, hey, this is when you're gonna come to work. This is who you're gonna meet. This is what we're gonna do the first two weeks. This is how you're gonna learn. 
all of a sudden you'll see that people just start coming in and they leave because mm -hmm. they don't know what to expect. And companies go through that. That's normal growing pains. That's typical. I see it all the time. Um, so really, I was able to get in there and and really dial in those processes. Let's formalize an onboarding plan. Let's formalize a way to attract the talent, attract the right people, mm -hmm. so we don't have people coming in and leaving in two weeks. So um, I really, I from soup to nuts, all the way from how do we attract people, how do we recruit people, how do we interview people, how do we sure that this person who's a total stranger is the right fit for this position? And then really, really dialing in that onboarding process was probably one of my favorite things. So, so are, are these the things now that you're taking to other organizations? It, and helping yes, them to absolutely. Them? Absolutely. So um, funny enough, last night um, at the event, I had probably three different <clears throat> people ask me the same question. At how many employees do I need HR? And my answer, and I kind of chuckle, one. Yeah. <laughs> do you need a full-time HR person? No. But do you need a foundation of HR? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that it's that foundation that's going to allow you to bring the right people in that will help you grow your business and will help you be successful. So like for a 10-person organization, what does that right uh, framework look like? So for a 10-person organization, we have a framework of we need a handbook. Mm -hmm. Do we have people who are driving? We need to make sure that we have that dialed in. Are we doing background checks if needed, if that's applicable to the organization? And are we doing the same thing every single time? Right. We right. got to make sure every single every single employee is treated exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So that foundation is really, really just dialing in process and procedure. Even if it's just we're going to do reviews once a year, let's implement that. Let's put that in writing so the employees know what to expect. So that foundation is absolutely process and procedure. Awesome. And like, do you help them with uh, hiring? Yes. Oh, yes, so absolutely. What does that look like? So it, it kind of varies depending on the client. So anywhere from um, I'm going to help you write this job description, sit down with you, let's find out what we need. Oftentimes you're a small organization. You don't. You know you need help. Right. Right. Yeah. Man, I need help. Yeah. But what really do you need? You don't need, maybe you don't need a HR director, but you do need some HR help. Maybe you need a bookkeeper. Maybe really what you need is an administrative assistant. Maybe you need a surveyor because you're the one trying to go out and do everything. So it kind of starts with a needs analysis. We, we sit down, I ask a whole bunch of questions. We find out what it is that you need. Then we put a job description together. So now we've got a job description. Now we take that into the advertising side of it. Mm -hmm. We want people to come work here. We want people to be excited about working here. Every company has a competitor. Yes. Every company does. So why would that person want to work here? Well, let's talk about all the things that we offer, maybe even outside of wage, right? Everybody wants a dollar. Right. So what do we have? We have a training program. We have an employee rewards program. We have a great culture. We, our company, all our employees are referrals from other people. Like that, those are the things that people are looking for. We have flexibility. We have, you name it, mm -hmm. right? It's it's about attracting the right person. So I take it from there and then um, I assist with interviews. So I'll do those either first interviews, maybe the last interviews, kind of depending on what we want to do. Um, it really dialing in, what are we actually looking for? Do we need to evaluate skills? Do we need to evaluate personalities? Is this person remote? How are we going to manage that, right? Right. And setting really setting the expectations for the candidate too, so they know what to expect, even through the process. Do you know how many candidates you lose in a process just to go, like ghosting? Oh, it, isn't it crazy how some people just don't show up for inter interviews? Why? I, I mean, <laughs> I, I wasn't even a thing. I can't even imagine not showing up for an interview all my the entire time. life. Yeah. All the time. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting on a Teams interview like, it's five minutes. Right. It's a, you know, and obviously we've got to cut off, but people don't show up to those. No. How can you not show up to that? I've had nurses who are super highly qualified, like just not show up to interviews for our, our IV company. And I'm like, how is that even possible? A professional to yes. not show up. But they have they're degreed. Yeah, they it does happen. And it happens everywhere you go. Nobody's immune to it. Right. So it's 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 just about keeping them in the process. And if you're up front in the beginning of the process, you know, you can set up automatic emails to let them know what to expect. So right. this is what the interview process looks like. We're going to review your resume. We'll call you in a couple of days, maybe three days or whatever you set. From there, this is what you can expect over the next two weeks. We plan to make higher in this amount of time. It's just about showing that you care, mm -hmm. that they understand what to expect. Yeah, giving predictability, I think, is super important. Absolutely. For, I mean, not only the company itself, so they know what's happening, but for the individual, because they 
need to know what to expect. Right. You know, what am I going to be doing the first two weeks that I'm here? Right. Uh, you know, to, just all those little expectations that are there. Right. Well, and it's such a great opportunity to really show your culture. Yes. You know, and that message that you send to them, it shows that you care. It shows that you're organized. It shows that even if you're 10 people, hey, we have this dialed in process. And how simple is that? Right. That took five minutes to put an email together, right? Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to expect and we're going to do this which you're gonna do anyway, now it's in writing. So it's just about showing that you're organized. You know, people right now, they're leaving companies. Obviously we've got the great resignation, but they're leaving companies, they leave because of management, they mm -hmm. leave because of leadership, they leave for more flexibility, more opportunities to grow. So if you can really show in the beginning, like, hey, here's this really dialed in process that we have, and you know everything that is going to happen over the next couple of weeks, that shows that person that there's leadership there. That right. shows that person who's looking for that, like, oh, wow, they're really on top of this. Yeah. Thank you. Now I know. So you just mentioned something, the great resignation. Mm -hmm. right? So we just came through a crazy time. Right? Yes. COVID and all that. And you were in the thick of it. You yes. were managing this big company as far as all the HR and everything. What was that like? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so... All right, I'll start on St. Patrick's Day of 2020. I will yeah. never forget that day. So we were already sort of a couple weeks into what is this virus, what's going on? And by that point, I mean, we were just trying to do anything we could mm -hmm. to help mitigate risk. By that point, we, um, we had implemented swing shifts. So we didn't have every employee in the building at the same time because our desks were close together. Mm -hmm. So we really worked with management and the management team there was just phenomenal. And I will say this about that organization, their R&D team, their research and development team, they just crushed through to be able to um, really facilitate the actual processing of remote work, right? So St. Patrick's Day, we go to lunch and I remember it next door and I remember the manager there saying, I've, we're shutting down tonight. And it just seems so surreal. And I'm sitting there with my CEO and we're like, eyes wide open. Wow. Like, uh-oh, what do we got to do? So we've already tried to, you know, mitigate as much risk as we could. Again, nobody was wearing masks. Nobody really knew. Mm -hmm. So um, I continued about my day. I went to the gym. That was the last time I went to the gym mm -hmm. in 2020 until, I don't know, September. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they shut that gym down that night. Um so as things started to shut down, I remember, you know, being on the phone and it was a Sunday and I'm like, hey, we need to make sure that we can get our employees remote. And we, we also had employees who were in other states. Um, so it was very interesting it, it, because there was a lot of, no, no, they're not going to shut the state down. I'm like, you know, other states are being shut down. Yeah. Our governor is not going to be the last one to do it. Right. So let's just plan for this to be shut down and you know what our employees were starting you know people were starting to get that look on their face like oh people are too close to me i had you know they were showing that they were uncomfortable yeah. whether or not they were saying it they were showing it mm -hmm. so from there yeah. um i really worked with the r d group and said okay can we facilitate this can people still work from home can't i mean they had these giant files that needed to people needed to work on and they had to kind of rearrange the way that the server was so from there I said, all right, they're going to shut everything down. We're doing this. So I worked with our attorney. I worked with the CEO. We really implemented, once again, policies. Mm -hmm. So working from home policies. So we laid everything out. Okay, you're working from home. This is when we expect you to be working. These are your working hours. You can set this with your manager because we did have some flexibility there. Um, this is how we're going to be communicating. These are the expectations. You will be on screen. So people understood there was no question okay, I'm working from home, but I'm still expected to be on screen. I'm still expected, you know, from the waist up yeah. to have on a company polo or, you know, working clothes, this, that, or the other. We specified all the way down to hats. You can wear a hat on the screen, but it has to be a company hat. Okay. So all the way down to that, yeah. really ironed out, this is what's expected of you. Everybody went home. Everybody was fine. And communication and productivity actually increased, if you can believe that. Wow. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I think it's such an amazing thing to orchestrate that during a time where, I mean, you don't run fire drills for that. No. It's a, hey. That's a black swan. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and you, you managed it really well. And if I remember correctly, your, your company grew pretty yes. well during this period. Yes, of time. it did. Now, there was also an interesting, we had a very interesting aspect as well. So we had, at the time, we had technicians who traveled across the country. Oh, 
to go, that was step one in our projects. They mm -hmm. traveled across the country and they essentially captured what we called existing conditions. So they took measurements, laser measurements, they took photos, whatnot. They worked with architects and engineers, so they needed to get to the site first mm -hmm. to collect that data before anybody could start working on it. Well, certain states had certain rules about whether or not you were allowed to come into the state from another state. And then we had an office in New York where we actually had different counties with different rules no kidding. Uh-huh. So I had employees in one county. If they went to the other county, they had to come back and quarantine. It was just a mess. So at the time, we said, okay, well, we have these field technicians, and we can't get them on the road. So we, we furloughed them. Okay. We furloughed them during that time. So we stayed in contact with them. Do you know we did not lose one technician during that time? Wow. That's not impressive. one. And it was because they... They knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. We were in constant communication. Hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Even if we had nothing else, even if we didn't know anything, how are you doing? It's about caring about them, right? Didn't lose one field technician. Yeah, Man, I mean, that just speaks to the organization that you guys yes. have and, and really the people aspect Yes, of it. it's culture. That right. is culture, and that starts at the top. That's from the policies and procedures in place to say, hey, did you check in on your employees? Because manager, you're responsible for that, and I'm holding you accountable to make sure that you're checking in on your employees. Right, that's awesome. Exactly. So um, I know we've we've joked and talked in the past about the funny things that can happen in HR. Yes. Do you have any funny stories? Oh, yes. So one of my favorite lines that I always say is other people's kids. And it applies across the board. That. Say it all other the time. people's kids. Yep. It could be, you know, 105 years old. It's somebody else's kid. Yeah, you know, I, doesn't I say matter. some people's kids. Yep, yep, exactly. So it, that kind of applies across the board. Um, being in HR and being on the consulting side, I get a lot of clients who call me up with, so so-and-so just put cameras up. Oh, okay. Did they tell people they were going to put cameras up? No. Okay. So I come across things like that all the time. Um, people putting cameras up where they shouldn't be putting cameras up. People, uh, I had one, I had made a joke one day. I said, one day you're, you know, working on high level strategic items in HR. And the next day you come in and an employee calls and says that their boss is dating their ex. Okay. <laughs> I've had people, um, uh, quit in the middle of the night, you know, possibly after, you know, some cocktails and not remembering and then come into the morning and then have a manager who knew that they had quit, go ahead and put them to work. Wow. Yes. Why? Why? Yeah. No. I'm like, hold on, I'll be there. So I've had to come in. We accept your resignation. Thank you. But you know, your services are, you know, no longer needed. We appreciate everything that you've done and we'll see you later. Just got blackout drunk. Yes. Quit. Quit. Forgot. Forgot. Oh. <laughs> Came to Comes work. Comes in, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And the manager's like, oh, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, tell him to go home. Yeah. <laughs> you quit. Yeah. Th thanks for playing. Okay. Yeah. So I've had that. Oh, my gosh. I've had, um, oh, I had somebody um, travel, bring his uh, girlfriend on a trip on the company dime. Then, yep, stay the week, rack up some credit card stuff, go back to the office, Middle of the night, drops his equipment off, and now we have this credit card bill, that personal expenses. What companies don't realize is when you authorize somebody to use your credit card, mm -hmm. really difficult to claim fraud because they're authorized to use that. So you really have to dial in those credit card policies and be on top of it. So we noticed because, guess what? Within policy, he did not submit his expense report. Mm. So we found this out. He, he had uh, dropped the equipment off overnight. Um, we issued a live check, sent the live check out to the manager out there who was um, a retired police officer, mm -hmm. knows the law, love it. So if you want your check, go pick it up. Never came to pick up the check, of course, so we wound up finally mailing it. But do you know all this over like $300? Wow. $300? Yeah. Why? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, people... I can, people are people. Yeah, people are people. And yeah, uh, yeah, some people's kids. Yeah. So what about like some fun stories? On oh my gosh. HR and how it's helped. Yes, so many fun stories. One of my absolute favorite stories um, it goes back to the company that I was with. So as we were expanding, we had this group of um, individuals, right? They were all had the same title and, and the group was getting large. We had about 20 people they reported to a manager. Well, when you're looking at that, they were coming in, they were staying about six months, eight months, and then they were leaving. Mm -hmm. Well, why are they leaving? Because they have nowhere to go in the organization. So I had worked with the management team, and it was really funny because um, 
they kind of didn't buy into my theory. And I, my theory was, okay, well, we have this wage range, like say it's a $10 wage range. Let's cut the range in half, you know, maybe 20 to $25 for the first, 25 to 30 for the second. And let's just take the position and kind of break it into two. So we have level one and then we have a senior level. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that's kind of silly. I'm like, well, all we have to do is implement like, hey, we've got somewhere to go. You have somewhere to grow into. And let's give that senior person some additional responsibilities. Maybe they can be the mentor of the new hires. Maybe they're assigned to training. Maybe they're the lead on the site. And, and it was funny because they finally bought into it and said, okay, let's do it. So we now have this new position. Now we're going to identify a couple people who we're going to promote into this new position. Mm -hmm. Didn't change wage ranges, doesn't cost the company anything in addition. We literally wrote senior in front of the title on the job description and added in some mentoring um, responsibilities. And we're at this team lunch and everybody's standing up and it comes to the time where we're talking about this new position and, and okay, we've got these three people that we're promoting into this position. Everybody starts clapping. One of them, six foot two looking, you know, football player yeah. guy cried, wow. wiped tears. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. And it was really funny because I, I turned to my, my CEO and he just looked at me and I had this look on my face like, <laughs> and we were like, yay, look at that. And since then, the tenure, they haven't lost a technician for uh, voluntary resignation um, in <clears throat> like three and a half years. Wow. Yep. Since then that we added in some yeah. additional positions, like then we started talking about, well, what about like an assistant manager position? You know, so you have somewhere to go. If people have somewhere to go and they feel that the company values them and they know that, hey, my manager, he's got my back. He's going to help me get to this next position. It's going to happen. I'm going to stay and I'm going to call my friends and tell them that they should come work here too. Right. I well, got promoted in six months. It, well, it's, uh, it comes down to the basic principle that people will do more for recognition than they will for money. Yes, they will. Uh, everybody wants to make money, right? Yes. But, man, someone that recognizes you mm -hmm. for something you're doing, they see you, that's so important. Yes. So that's a really smart move yes. by creating that title because a title doesn't always come with more money. No. They feel important, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's the objective is to make your people feel important, right? Exactly. And you should because they're the ones who are busting their butts out there on your behalf. They're representing Absolutely. you. At the end of the day, it's in your best interest as a business owner to make sure that people feel wanted and that they want to be here. Absolutely. Turnover costs, people don't realize what goes into turnover. Oh my gosh, if you just take somebody's annual salary, it's between 30 and 40% of, of their annual salary. Those are your turnover costs. Between having to go hire this person again, having to place the ads, having to, your time interviewing, um, having to train this person, get them up to speed, you're out. By the time that you hire someone, you're still 90 days out from them in most cases, um, from them being fully utilized, able to work on the job on their own. Yeah, it's true. That ramp up period takes a lot of time and you're still paying them. Yeah, you are. Time. And now you're training them mm -hmm. yeah. over and over again, just so they leave in another three months. Who wants to do that? Awesome. So now you, that you've gone into your, you know, your own business and doing uh, HR consulting, what are some companies that uh, you, th or what are some different types of companies that you think you can really help? Yes, that's a great question. So with my background in um, the architecture, engineering, con construction industry (AEC) as we call it, um, that is that's an easy one for me. I understand, you know, the insurance. I understand people who are out, you know, traveling. I understand people in the field. I understand workers' comp insurance, all that stuff. So that's a really, that's an easy one. And, and here in the Valley, there's a lot of um, smaller firms like that that have continued to grow. Um, I love helping those companies out as well. However, I'm working with, um, I have a merchant services company. Um, I have a rain gutters company that I've been working with as well um, here and there for some uh, handbook things. Um, I'm working with uh, just a friend uh, there in the, auto, the automotive industry. If you have people, human resources is the same everywhere you go. Yeah, It's policy procedure. Having that knowledge in the AEC industry is also helpful. Mm -hmm. However, it, human resources is human resources. Right. Yeah, in every industry, there's different hoops to jump through. Absolutely. So that one, obviously, you know uh, super well. But you're right. People are people yep. at every company. Yep, they sure are. Awesome. Well, so how can people get a hold of you? So you can visit my website, which is lnhrconsulting.com. 
And on there, there is a button that you can press for a free consultation. We'll go through kind of high level. We'll, you know, set up another appointment. We can do a deep dive. Um, so yeah, on there also is my cell phone number. You can click call me right right then and there, and it will ring to my cell phone, and I'll pick it up. Awesome. Well, I think everybody should should. Uh, hit up Laura if you own a company and you don't have the HR, the policies and procedures. Um, I can attest uh, what, uh, how great she is at this. So, you know, hit her up and go to the website, lnhrconsulting.com. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. See you later.